Hi, my name is Jay Sugarman, and I want to welcome you to Innovation Showcase. The main purpose of this ongoing series is to inform viewers about exciting innovations and creative individuals across the fields of business, science, technology, education, and the arts. Today, we're fortunate to have as our guest Dr. Paul Apen. Dr. Apen serves as the Chief Strategy Officer at E-Inc the world's leading developer and provider of electronic paper displays. During the program, we're finding out why and how e-ink came about. We'll trace its growth and development, and in the process, come to better understand and appreciate the wide range of applications, uses, and benefits of the company's groundbreaking efforts. Let's start by meeting Dr. Apen and then finding out all about e-ink. Welcome, Paul. Delighted you're able to be here. Thank you, Jay. Uh, it's um, really a pleasure. Oh, it's been fascinating just doing a little background reading. I'm mm -hmm. eager to hear more about the company and have you inform viewers. But before we jump right to that, mm -hmm. I think it would also be of interest just to briefly hear a little bit about your background and your current position. Great. Yes, I'm um, happy to give you some uh, sense of my background. Uh, my formal education and training was in chemistry and uh, material science. And uh, I've worked in uh, different industries over the course of my professional career, all related to materials technology mm. and advanced technology for um, a variety of end applications. I've worked in uh, energy efficiency uh, applications. I've worked in semiconductor uh, materials. I've worked in display materials, optical materials. And mm. now I've come full circle back to e-ink. Nice, nice. And your position as a Chief Strategy Officer, what does that entail? Yeah, uh, Chief Strategy Officer at E-Inc. Uh, requires a few hats, I would say. Uh, the strategy position really uh, seeks to set some medium to long term uh, a direction for the company. And so uh, in addition to corporate strategy, I'm involved quite a bit in corporate planning, uh, mm. our business development uh, and commercial uh, business activities. Also, uh, the marketing team uh, comes under mm. the strategy group as well. Uh, and I work, of course, with all of my colleagues in the research, development, and manufacturing areas to try to make E-Inc. a successful company. Uh, which it most definitely is, as we'll hear more and more. Um, leading up to that, could mm -hmm. you just give us a little sense of the history and development inspiration mm -hmm. for the company? Yeah. E-Inc. was a classic uh, startup. It uh, spun out of MIT Media Lab back in 1997. Mm. And uh, the founder's idea uh, was to try to create um, a, a reading experience that was completely different uh, so that you could actually read a book uh, or read a screen outdoors. And so their idea was to uh, think of how to make an electronic paper kind of device. Yeah. Uh, and it ends up being um, uh, inventions that were initially created at the MIT Media Labs. A company was formed that they called E-Ink, and the founders went to that company, uh, raised money uh, to develop uh, the technology further, and to develop the capability to manufacture and bring the product and technology to market. In the 2000 time period, the company found some very um, uh, good opportunities to create a display that could be used in an electronic book reader. Yeah. And our first launch customer was Sony. They launched the Libre uh, device mm -hmm. back in 2004 or so. Uh, and then our second uh, major customer was Amazon with the Kindle uh, being a big hit and success. And Most so that definitely. created tremendous commercial momentum. Uh, the company continued to grow. Uh, it was acquired by one of our partners, uh, which was a display company that was headquartered in Taiwan, and now we're part of a bigger electronic uh, ink, or e-ink holdings group um, mm -hmm. uh, based in Taiwan. The U.S. headquarters is still in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. We've continued to grow. Uh, we have a facility now uh, in Billerica, an R&D facility. We also have our manufacturing uh, site out in the western part of Massachusetts in South Hadley. So we've developed and invested quite a bit uh, in the Massachusetts uh, area. Uh, to continue to build not only new products and new technologies, but to also manufacture those products and ship them globally. So it's a very exciting story. Oh, most exciting from locally, Cambridge to, as you said, international yes. and, 
everywhere in the world. Yeah. Um, well, we're fortunate to have both images and items that oh, you great. brought. Yes. So we can share, you mentioned uh, reading devices, and we'll start maybe with the reading and writing opportunities sure. okay. with the technology. Mm -hmm. And here's the screen of the e-reader. Yeah, the e-reader um, device is probably our most familiar yes. uh, product that uh, ends up in the market. And we make the display that goes in the e-reader device. And it gives a very paper-like experience, right? It's digitized, but it is composed of black and white particles that can be moved uh, in the screen uh, to create information or images on the surface. And we're able to control that with some sophisticated electronics, some uh, sophisticated physics and other applications like that, or well, other competencies well, like that. What were some of the challenges to reach this level of the technology that hadn't been achieved before? The um, electrophoretic technology is how we would describe um, the fundamentals of moving particles in an electric field. So we take these particles that would be positively charged and negatively charged, and we move them in a film. The film would look something like this. And this is really our core material that ends up being uh, the uh, key component in this electronic display. And this material um, is cons consists of electronic ink oh, yeah. uh, that's coated on different substrates. Mm -hmm. And it can be switched back and forth from black nice. to white. And it's the careful control of those particles that really was the ch big challenge for our scientists and engineers to overcome as a first step to make the technology viable. Then trying to scale that up, of course, was our second big challenge, where uh, we had to be making these uh, films uh, in kilometer lengths. Mm. So we have a manufacturing process where we coat the ink onto a substrate, we coat it in a roll-to-roll -roll process, so it's a continuous process, and we do this on the scale of uh, kilometer lengths, you know, two feet wide, three feet mm. wide by kilometers. Wow. And so now, um, from a small startup to, you know, a fully capable high volume manufacturer mm -hmm. of the electronic uh, paper uh, materials and displays is really where the story goes. Initially, our technology was black and white, like I'm showing here. We have now continued to advance that technology. Yeah. We've added color. Uh, we've been able to um, uh, adopt and use flexibility of the materials to create different shapes and different elements. And now we've scaled up these displays to be even larger size. So hopefully we can show some of those examples during the right, discussion today. Even uh, changing landscapes, interactive. Yes, all of those yeah. things are possible. And so um, one of the key things about this display technology is that it's very different than other kinds. Um, a couple of features that make it exciting. One is um, it's generally low power. It is much lower power to operate than other kinds of display technology. Uh, the fact that the form of it uh, can be changed and varied from maybe a very simple um, uh, form factor like this, which is a triangular or rectangular, to a display like this, which uh, would be flexible and could be laser cut into different shapes. So it just creates more elements and tools for product design. Yeah, that variable seemed to come up more and more across the board when I was reading about the range of materials, mm -hmm. the low power right. that it offers this opportunity. Yeah. Well, let's continue. Sure. And we'll just do a few more. Here's yeah. some images as we do our sort of reading, writing entry. So our main product category was the e-reader. Uh, and that's uh, still and remains a very important business for e-ink. But now we've extended the technology. And in addition to the general reading, we're able to have uh, a writing capability. So naturally, it makes sense, right? Paper you can read, you can also write mm -hmm. on paper. So I can write just like that, a very natural experience, yeah. uh, and uh, create now a note-taking capability or an annotation capability onto uh, digital paper. Uh, and so this category of product for us now is uh, a very important one, and it's starting to show uh, a lot of uh, new entrants into these note-taking devices. We call them e-note, um, but they're really a writing function with the reading function uh, together. So it's very Well, important. I even appreciate in the e-books mm -hmm. ability to highlight, 
to make comments yes. on a text you're reading uh, just becomes second nature now. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting. And as these categories continue to develop, um, you know, we're able to um, uh, enhance the writing experience. It's very natural, it's very fast, it's very responsive. And, um, these kinds of note-taking devices now are starting to gain some excitement mm -hmm. in the market. So well, we'll continue, we'll make sure. our way through the images, Let's give another wonderful example there. Yeah. So one of the features that uh, you'll see if you own an e-reader or if you take a look at these note-taking devices is that they're high resolution and so yeah. you can get very detailed images. And while these screens are black and white to start, we're now developing and we'll show hopefully some pictures later of full color screens yeah. using the e-ink technology. And then this very exciting product, the writable desk. Yes, writable desk. We have uh, used now or developed a film technology. I showed you these films before. Yes. This one now is just a very simple writing film. It doesn't even need complex electronics. So it's a film and with it you can just start writing. So it's like picking up a pad of paper. Yeah. And so now for different writing surfaces, whether it be desks mm. or marker boards or graffiti walls, you can have a material that's very easy to use. And we've just introduced this to um, uh, the market. This is a larger um, interactive whiteboard uh, from working with one of our partners. And so imagine taking this note-taking device, yeah. scaling it up now to 42 inches in size, so three and a half feet right. uh, across. And it has those kinds of features and interactivity where you can write notes, you can brainstorm with your project teams, you can share information because it's a connected device. Yeah, what a feature. So the key thing here is that now all of our devices, you know, are digital paper, but they're connected. And they're connected uh, to each other or can be connected to each other and to other devices. And so our customers are working hard. Now, as we just scratch the surface now, it's one of the exciting things the more I find out, and I think viewers and others about e-ink, mm -hmm is just the diversity and the growth from the initial idea of That's the right. reader into all these other uses that yeah. you're taking advantage of making opportunities for people. Yes. Fabulous. Um, very, it's very exciting. And you know, these first few things may be more uh, familiar to consumers, but right. we have a lot of uh, technology and products now going into what I would call more industrial type of applications. We think of it as the Internet of Things. As more and more mm. devices mm -hmm. become connected, there's always going to be some need for a um, uh, visual um, cue or I'll say a uh, information exchange or images provided on these kinds of devices. And so e-ink is ideal for many of these types and of products. Let's move on to another area, some of the wearables mm -hmm. that you have that yeah. people are most likely familiar with but yeah. haven't made the connection. Okay. Yeah, and it, again, takes advantage of the fact that it's low power, that it's very easy to see in outdoor lighting conditions, which some of the traditional LCD screens may be more difficult to see. And so we are now, and have introduced these into a whole range of product types. They can be not only information and functional, like a watch, but they can also have a design component to mm -hmm. it. So if you see, now there's patterns that can be integrated into the watch band or into the wearable band that again, create more excitement around the product itself. And you said uses, and here's a wonderful example in the healthcare field. Yeah, um, medical uh, applications are one that's getting a lot of attention from us, and we've had some very nice uh, applications showcased here. This is a, um, a glucose meter, uh, and it's um, done um, by uh, Abbott, uh, mm. and uh, we work with our partners to provide the core technology in the display, which is an e-ink uh, display. But it's very easy to see, it's easy to read, um, and it's low power, so you don't have to worry about changing the batteries and doing these kinds of other things. And it's a great example of where, you know, if people are using it for glucose monitoring and diabetes, maybe the vision is impaired or other things, and so it's a very easy screen to mm -hmm. see and to visualize and communicate information to the patient yeah. or the caregiver. Too. Fabulous, so fabulous. Really, really another And nice another product. area we're gonna jump to that people, I think, just take for granted now, mm -hmm. but again, now we can step back and appreciate mm -hmm. the connection with your work, are signage. Yes. And one of the areas is right in our backyard yes. with uh, updating of the T status. That's great. Uh, I'm, we're very excited about this, and I know the whole team uh, at E-Ink uh, is really excited about introducing 
these uh, displays uh, for use for uh, transportation signage. Yeah. It's a really important opportunity for us, and we're doing a pilot test with the MBTA, uh, and with our partners have installed uh, these displays. You can see them in Newton and some other mm -hmm. stops along the Green Line right now. So maybe in the summer, uh, we'll get some feedback on how well that uh, pilot test is, b is going on. I'd like to add a couple other things Please. Uh, that Please. are local. Uh, we have worked with partners to install e-ink signs in uh, kiosks in uh, Boston and in Cambridge. And our partners have uh, constructed these kiosks which have our e-ink displays. Yeah. It communicates local information of interest, event information, government information, uh, and, and it uh, is very nice because these displays for transportation or for the kiosk information can run on a solar cell or a solar mm. uh, panel, and so don't need to be connected to the grid. So there's sustainable technology. It reduces the construction time and cost to get these things installed, and so we expect those kinds of attributes for our products will make it an exciting thing. Yeah, no, thing I've seen one in um, City Hall downtown. Yes, that's information. Exactly right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, very, that's our screen. So. Very yeah. useful. Very so, useful. Yeah. And then other commercial uses like at uh, gas stations? Yes. Uh, so if we look at e-ink from small size to big size, we have all kinds of things that uh, we can bring forward. And with this, um, we're able to create a very unique uh, pricing sign for our customer. Mm. Um, these signs are in uh, Europe right now, and they're on uh, gas station um, posts, and they uh, have a very unique font to them. So the customer wanted to have something that was nice and easy to read in outdoor sunlight, but also had a very um, unique uh, style to it. So they were very interested in sort of the brand positioning of their uh, signs. And I think this one is uh, also overseas, yes. uh, Australia, I yes, believe. Yes, you're right. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Um, and this is another example of using an outdoor transportation sign to make information communication yeah. uh, much simpler. So instead of having a dozen or so signs, there, one says tollway zone, one says parking only on this day, one says yeah. street cleaning <laughs> on another day, this information is digital. Mm. So it can provide all wow. of that update Fabulous. Uh, remotely. And so it makes it much easier for the municipalities to manage uh, traffic information. Mm -hmm. And another more commercial area that more of us are seeing are menus. Yes. And signs in retail stores. Exactly. And the retail category itself, broadly speaking, is an important one for us. Um, you know, we had e reader, we had the writing uh, devices, and we talked about signage. The retail area is one that's been growing quite a bit for us. And it goes from small size displays like these mm. uh, electronic shelf tags, yes. which are basically uh, replacing the paper or printed pricing. Sure. In a supermarket or an electronic store, you can use this, connect it digitally, communicate pricing dynamically. It's a very nice tool for retailers um, to, to use. And we have now small signs that have been used, like these, which are advertising um, devices, basically can communicate information uh, to uh, consumers, shoppers, in the retail environment about products that might be on display or might be on sale. And the menu board is just another example of an extension of showing these things and creating excitement in the retail space. Right, and just another example of... Yes. These are the shelf tags that we talked about, electronic price. These are larger size, right. um, and I think you can have small size, you can have big size, and so you can include more information on the larger size, of course. You could start to include product specs and warranty mm -hmm. information, maybe more information about specials and sales and mm -hmm. other things. So retailers can be more dynamic and interactive yeah. uh, with the consumer. That's a big part of what retail is, is looking oh, to do. Oh, it's very engaging it than just you. some drab yeah. little tag, for it, sure. It is, for and so, sure. you know, for the end customer, I think they can now be very interactive, like you might be yeah, online. Yeah, and I think it, it's win-win for everybody. I mean, it gives you more information as consumer, and I think it'll be more of an impetus for sales by engaging 
the consumer, the customer. Yeah, that's what we, sure. we, we hope the market will see. For and, sure. Um, uh, we're starting to see this now take off a little bit in the U.S., which mm -hmm. is great because it had been very successful in Europe uh, and in some parts of Asia, and now the U.S. is seeing And this. these next couple, here's a wonderful use of the technology. Yeah, this is uh, another great example of the low power, um, easy to read, easy to install kind of device. This is a conference room sign. Um, called Joan, and this is done by our partner VisionEck, and um, they are having a very nice business that's growing um, worldwide, and this sign can be just put right on a door in a conference room in an office space. Uh, it doesn't need to be hardwired, just needs yeah. a wireless connection, wow. and it operates on batteries and can go for a long time, and that's really one of the key value propositions that our devices can go a long time with a single battery charge or in some cases they can be autonomously powered or powered with solar cells. So it reduces the need to try to wire everything up uh, into the you know, electrical grid. You know, I used the word in the introduction, groundbreaking. When I came across this, hmm. most definitely fits in that category, the smart card and what you're doing with that. Yeah. Smart card technology is interesting, right? And it's becoming important as you see more and more cards have chips or other information that adds a level of security mm. to the use of the card. Uh, and in this case, we can have an alphanumeric set of uh, digits in this small, tiny display in the size of a card. And so it's very thin, very uh, small, but it can be connected again to you know, back-end process for these transactions and use a one-time passcode yes. or a one-time PIN yeah. number for managing transactions. So. Again, the level of security is enhanced by using a small display. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pick up just an, another oh, avenue sure. of growth mm -hmm. with uh, PRISM technology. Great. Yeah, this gives me a chance to talk a bit about color, uh, which we've spoken of just briefly. Most of our leading businesses have been built on the black and white, but now we've extended our technology to include not just black and white pigments or particles, but colored pigments and particles within our film materials. And they're really a marvelous now uh, platform for us to extend our uh, product capabilities uh, into things uh, like large size digital signage or even to uh, architectural panels that could be used in walls. So let's talk yeah. about that. Well, here's one f wonderful color example. Yes, and, and this one includes our all color display. So PRISM is uh, very bright, vibrant colors. This has very bright colors, but it's all in one display. So we can have all colors and all points on the display. And this is being uh, launched this year as part mm. of our, uh, uh, um, we call it ACP, Advanced Color e-paper. And this will end up being uh, hopefully another exciting uh, product launch for you. And you mentioned uh, color in different corporate settings. That's right. Please share what we're seeing here. Yeah. Here's a color wall with uh, e-ink panels or tiles that change color. And it creates a dynamic wall instead of static walls, yeah. which we're, wow. of course, familiar with, right. right? The paint on the wall or the paint on panels, very static, doesn't change. But now we can introduce color uh, and really essentially have color changing paint. Uh, and we've shown examples with different walls. This one's a woven configuration where the panels look like they're woven together. Um, but it really does illustrate what's possible with uh, e and color. It's color, but it's also flexible, and it's also low power. So and then important. stepping out a bit, even on a grander scale, at San Diego Airport, mm -hmm. I think we're seeing the car rental area. Yes. Uh, Dazzle. Mm -hmm. The Dazzle project was uh, completed about a year and a half ago. And uh, it's a very exciting project. It is the largest e-paper installation uh, that I know of in the world. <laughs> so I'm excited to, to brag about that a little <laughs> bit. Uh, and it consists of 2,000 e-ink tiles that are uh, configured across the uh, side uh, facade of the rental car uh, facility. It's a third of a mile long and wow. six stories or five stories high. And you can see when you have a close-up of those tiles, they're autonomously powered. They're connected together wirelessly, uh, and we can create a dynamic interactive facade now. So the whole building changes, the uh, whole surface of the building. So instead of being a static facade, it's now an interactive facade. And the uh, animations that were created by the artists 
uh, are played continually mm -hmm. on the side of the wall uh, at the San Diego Weather Conference. Wonderful. So it's very exciting. Oh. If you're driving down I-5 yeah. in California, take a look and on your right near the airport and you will see it right there. It's definitely, really definitely. Well, I know in the near future we're going to see more on that just going up and down mm -hmm. uh, highways 90 and 95 here we're for looking sure. looking forward to that for sure. You know, we're fortunate to have a short clip to okay. get a little behind the scenes look of where some of this magic happens. Okay. So let's roll in the clip and okay. please add whatever commentary you choose. Okay. So uh, E-Ink is an innovation company um, by its beginning, uh, from its beginnings. And uh, here you're seeing some of our chemistry labs uh, and formulation labs uh, at the Billerica site. This is where we do all of our advanced research, all of our mm. advanced product development, uh, and it shows really the range of capability that's needed to develop and create new products using the electronic ink. So we have experts in chemistry, we have experts in material science, we have experts in coding and processing of materials, we have experts in electronics, and in device physics and particle, you know, kind of uh, 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 um, ink and all these sorts of things. And so that range of capability has to come together and work smoothly to create some of these products because there's some substantial challenges to uh, that have been overcome to make this work. And um, beforehand you were mentioning to me mm -hmm. that e-ink has moved into university settings. Would you briefly share a little bit about that? Sure. Um, from our beginning, having been spun out of MIT, we've always had a very strong innovation and learning environment at e Inc. Um, and we continue these collaborations uh, with many, many of them occurring in the Massachusetts, mm -hmm. Boston area. So, of course, we maintain ties with MIT, but we've also maintained ties with all the major, or many of the major universities in greater Boston. We have um, collaborations with the University of Massachusetts at Lowell and Amherst mm. and other places. So it's really part of the, you know, the DNA of our company yeah. uh, no, to it's keep up back. these things. And it's a combination of you know, collaborations with students and professors, but also looking to recruit you know, top talent to sure. keep sure, them, sure, you sure. Know, um, interested in what our company is doing. So it's and very exciting. And you place a premium on the professional development of current employees. We do, uh, and we have uh, uh, something called e Inc University, which is uh, you know a nice uh, example of how we continue to foster employee development, employee learning. We have regular classes that cover everything from technology to business uh, and everything in between. We have our own teammates or team members that uh, present and teach these classes. We also have outside lecturers come in and uh, continue to foster this learning environment. Uh, so we find it to be a very productive mm -hmm. uh, model for um, um, uh, employee engagement. Nice, nice. In the uh, just brief time, one minute we have sure. left, um, you've shared some of the current and upcoming efforts. What are some others that maybe we didn't cover that you'd like to highlight, even if they're at the beginning stages? Sure. Um, I think what you'll end up seeing from E-Ink is more, um, more in the way of uh, advanced color, mm. uh, and more in the way of uh, new writing technologies, mm -hmm. as we highlighted one. Wonderful. These are the kinds of things that we expect to see coming in the future Fabulous. You know, to products and to showcases. Well, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we do have to wrap okay. up. I want to thank you so much for being here, for sharing the wide range of opportunities that people can benefit from E-Ink's technology and continued success. And we'll definitely uh, go on the website and just try to keep up with all the things mm. you're doing. Thank you, Jay. Also want to thank those of you watching for joining us and hope you'll be able to tune in next time.